Ilen Silla Lumen Omen Tiovo. Today I bring to you all the legend of Glorfindel. Glorfindel, whose name means golden flower in Sindarin, was a Noldoran elf born in Valinor during the years of the trees. Glorfindel served Torgon, the son of Fingolfin, who was the grandson of High King Finway of the Noldor. Due to his loyalty to Torgon, Glorfindel would follow him into the flight of the Noldor. He, however, was loath to take leave of Valinor, as he did not believe in the vengeance sought by Feanor and his followers. Because of this, and Glorfindel's good heart would not participate in the kinslaying at Alcalande. Once again, his loyalty to Torgon dictated his actions, for after the doom of Mandos was declared, Glorfindel continued to follow Torgon to Middle-earth. Glorfindel would dwell in Nevrast with Torgon until the completion of Gondolin, where the people of Torgon would go and be hidden from friend and foe. Glorfindel would be loved by the people, and he became the chief of the House of the Golden Flower. Because Glorfindel lived in Gondolin for most of the First Age, he would avoid much of the events brought by that age. That would be until word came to Gondolin of the Union of Mithros. Torgon, seeing the chance to defeat Morgoth, mustered 10,000 Gondolindrim, with Glorfindel being one of the captains of the host. During the near Nyeth Arnoidiad in 472, Glorfindel distinguished himself in battle. But from treachery of men, defeat came upon the Union. The Gondolindrim only survived due to the actions of the men of the House of Hador. Glorfindel would guard one of the flanks of the army during its retreat. For years after, Gondolin remained hidden from Morgoth's eyes. In the year 495, Tuor, son of Huor, would enter Gondolin and warn King Torgon of Gondolin's fate. Glorfindel and many other captains would advise Torgon to abandon the city, but Torgon, who was grown in his pride, would not. The fall of Gondolin was set. Just like the near Arnoidiad, treachery would reveal Gondolin's location to Morgoth. During the battle, Glorfindel proved mighty, battling long and hard against the orcs. But ultimately, the elves of Gondolin were decimated. Glorfindel was one of the few captains left once the evacuation began through a secret passage made by Idril, the daughter of Torgon. It seemed as though the survivors would escape, but a Balrog appeared with a host of orcs. Glorfindel selflessly leapt down to confront the Balrog. Glorfindel would cut the arm off the Balrog and sent the demon off the cliff. Glorfindel, however, would be grabbed by his hair, and he too would fall off the mountain. The death of Glorfindel hit the survivors hard, and they mourned him, creating many psalms for him. The elves would bury his body, and golden flowers would sprout from his grave. This, however, would not be the end of Glorfindel's story. Due to his sacrificial actions and his loathing leaving Valinor, the Valar granted him a new body. Glorfindel would be one of two of the exiles to be re-embodied, the other being Finrod Felagud. Glorfindel would remain in Valinor for the rest of the First Age and much of the Second Around the year 1600 of the Second Age, the Valar, seeing the rising darkness in Middle-earth, sent Glorfindel to Linden to aid the Free Peoples. His arrival coincided with the creation of the One Ring, 
In some versions of the tale, it is said that the blue wizards join Glorfindel on his voyage. Glorfindel would be a great giver of advice to the elves, giving them the words of the Valar in the days of flight. It is unknown what actions he took during the War of the Elves and Sauron and the War of the Last Alliance, though he would have certainly taken some action in these wars. With the defeat of Sauron and the end of the Second Age, many elves would depart Middle-earth for Valinor. Glorfindel's task was not complete, however, for the ring survived and Sauron could return. Glorfindel would live in Rivendell, serving Lord Elrond, the grandson of his former lord, King Torgon. In the 14th century of the Third Age, the evil realm of Angmar would rise in Eriador. For years, Angmar waged war against the splinter kingdoms of Arnor, defeating them one by one. During the Battle of Fornost, Glorfindel led a group of elves into battle, aiding to the defeat of the Witch King. Glorfindel and Prince Aarner of Gondor rode after him until the Witch King screamed, forcing Aarnor's horse to buck. Glorfindel thus realized that the Witch King was the leader of the Nazgul, and he told Aarnor, quote, Do not pursue him. He will not return to these lands. Far off yet is his doom, and not by the hand of man shall he fall. End quote. Glorfindel likely joined the White Council in driving Sauron out of Dol Guldur. It is now the time of the War of the Ring. When word came to Rivendell that the Nazgul were in pursuit of Frodo Baggins the Ringbearer, Glorfindel was one of the riders sent out to find Frodo. He found five of the ringwraiths and drove them off, clearing the way for the ringbearer to Rivendell. Glorfindel would also find Frodo and his hobbit companions under the guidance of Aragorn. Glorfindel would aid them in getting to Rivendell. When they were attacked by the Nazgul, it was Glorfindel who drove them into the water to be swept away by the waves. During the Council of Elrond on October 25th, 3018, Glorfindel suggested throwing the ring out to the sea, an action the Council would reject. Glorfindel would stay in Rivendell for much of these events. With the defeat of Sauron on March 25th, 3019, Glorfindel's task from the Valar was complete, and he would return to Valinor, the land he loved, though it was unknown when he would depart. So ends the legend of Glorfindel. Thank you all for watching. I hope you all enjoyed. As always, feel free to like and subscribe for more content, and please let me know how I can better improve these videos. Thanks, and as the elves say, Namarie.